Hey guys, welcome back to week number two of Grand May tutorials here on this channel. I'm so glad you came back. Um, today I want to talk about something that we touched on briefly in last week's video on beat matching Grand May 2 shows, and that's chasers. Chasers are a special form of sequence where every cue is played back with the same timing. So when you enable chaser mode on a sequence, then all of your timing is ignored and um, your chaser is played back based on a speed master, or rather a speed setting, just like effects, for example. And that's the exact reason why I never really liked chasers, because I felt like they take away this really important control over the exact timing of a sequence, which I feel um, makes a lot of the look and feel of my sequences. What I didn't realize, though, is that this uniform playback, this uniform timing of um, chasers, um, can actually be utilized to create a visual grid for all of your playbacks so that they're much more in harmony and and sort of listen to an underlying logic and, and grid system. And that's the first thing I want to show you today, how you can playback your chasers based on a visual grid. That's a trick that visual graphic designers also use to make their designs better. And number two, chasers have amazing runtime parameters and these parameters let you modify your chasers on the fly while you have them running in a show. You don't have to touch the programmer for that. And these runtime parameters are so powerful that they can completely change the look and feel of your chaser during showtime. So that's why chasers are actually a really, really powerful tool, although they kind of, you know, start out by, by giving you limitations. But so these two things I want to show you today, but before we get into that, I owe you guys a huge shout out. Thank you so much for 950 plus views on my very first YouTube video. I'm super excited about that. Um, thank you for all the positive reactions to on uh, to the video on Facebook. And a special thank you to my superheroes, 61 new subscribers. I love you guys and all these little interactions um, mean a lot to me because they show me that you care about what I do here. And I think that's probably one of the biggest fears that a creator can have that um, people won't even pay attention. So I'm really, really happy about that. Thank you guys so much. All right, let's jump into it. And I wanna open up the show file from last week. In case you haven't seen the video from last week, go check it out. Um, and what I just did is I fired up all of the three chasers plus the effect. And you can see that I hooked them all up to the same Speedmaster. And when I turn this way low, you should be able to tell that even though they seem to run on, on different speed bases, um, they're actually synchronized. In the sense that the first and the second chaser, for example, they're somewhat starting out at the same time. Now, when you look over here to the labels that I gave these executors, you can see one beat, half beats, quarter beats, and then two beats. And these are the playback speeds that I base these on. Now you might be asking yourself, how is that possible? I just explained to you that I hooked all of these up to the same speed master. And that's a trick which I used, which I want to elaborate a little more in this video. Um, if you go to the options, then you can not only assign a speed master over here in the speed column, but you can also set a speed multiplier. And if I click on that, you can see here you can multiply compared to the base speed, or you can divide compared to the base speed. So this one over here runs on normal, which means it runs just as fast as the Speedmaster. This one over here runs twice as fast as the Speedmaster. And then this sucker over here four times as fast as the Speedmaster. And you can see you can actually go up to 8, 16, 32. And then the effect over here actually runs um, half as fast as the Speedmaster. And how you can kind of use that to make your chasers play back on different um, beat notations. Um, you know, I, I kind of mentioned it in passing by last week, so I wanted to take a moment to explain to you what I mean. So let's say that these white box up here are the step length of the shared Speedmaster. I'm just gonna turn Granimate 3D off for now. Now, when we set the speed to normal, like we did on the first chaser, then it has the same step length in a way. It runs on the same 
speed? asked the shared speed master. Now if we set it to speed multiply by 2, it runs twice as fast as the speed master. So in that case, for every step that the speed master takes, this chaser will actually advance two steps forward. Same with speed multiplier 4. In that case, you go four times as fast as the speed master. So you can see up here, um, in one step of the speed master, your chaser will actually advance four steps. And then lastly, we have our effect, which is just half as fast as the shared speed master. And then obviously, you know, with two steps of the speed master, this chaser, or in our case, the effect will only go forward one step. Now, the speed master is based on beats. And that's probably pretty logical because it's set in beats per minute, BPM, that's, that's what it stands for. So if you have a normal speed on the chaser, then it will also go forward one step per beat. If you now have the chaser run twice as fast as the beat, as the speed master, not the beat master, then what will happen is that you have two steps in one beat. And so that's why you get half beats as the, the base playback speed. If you set it to multiplier by four, you probably guessed it. So for every one beat that it takes the speed master to go forward one step. So for every step of the beat master, which is one beat in length, this chaser right here will take four steps. And again, if you divide one beat by four, what you get is quarter beats. And lastly, obviously, if you make it half as slow, then you have two beats or a half bar. And this little trick is how you can base your chaser's playback on various beat lengths in a way. And what's special about this is if we, if you remember Grandmate 3D, you saw it, I made sure to trigger all the executors at the same time. And what I noticed, unfortunately, is that they won't stay perfectly in sync. For some reason, Granime 2 isn't quite that accurate. But what's still really cool about it is that due to the shared speed master and the speed multiplier options, what you get is a visual grid of your playback timings. And that's something special because in visual graphics design, that's exactly what designers will do as well. So if you see a really, really well-made visual design, what you will notice is that all the margins, all the sizes, all the font sizes, all the empty spaces, they all relate to each other. And not in such a straightforward manner as we have it here, where you just have simple multipliers, but it will be similar um, where one aspect ratio is the third of the margin around it or something like that. So basic point here is that whenever you have a visual design, you want to make sure that you sort of connect all your elements to each other. And that's what you get here. You get a visual playback grid for all of your chasers with a shared speed master and by using the, the speed multiplier option. And I think that's a really powerful trick that will help you make your shows more beautiful and, and just a little bit stronger. So that's the first trick I wanted to show you. And the second um, really cool aspect about chasers, which I wanted to show you, are its runtime parameters. It's really amazing because you don't, to my knowledge, you don't get that in any other form of playback. So let's take a look. I'm just gonna open up the edit mode for this chaser. We can see here all the cues um, with chasers that are actually called steps. But at the end of the day, if you know what I'm talking about, you know, we can say cues or steps, whatever. So we have three different groups of runtime parameters. And the first one is this one over here. So the default is an endless loop. And you can see with all the chasers that we have here, they just cycle through like you would expect it. What we can also do though, is set it to shoot off, for example. And I'm just going to turn all of the other playbacks off so we can uh, completely focus on the first one. So with shoot off, what will happen is that it will cycle through the chaser once. Let me turn that up a bit. And then it turns the executor off. And I think this is really cool for any sort of chaser that you bring in just every so often to sprinkle a little bit of something 
on top of your whole soul. So if a DJ, for example, drops beat, something like that, you can have a chaser ready in shoot off mode that just goes nuts and then leaves the stage again. Now the last option in this group of runtime parameters is shoot on. And this is just like shoot off, but instead of turning the executor off when it gets to the end, it will just pause it. So you can just hit go for another cycle. And I think that's that's probably a similar use case, um, only that you have the chaser in like some sort of idle state, and then whenever you need it to, to go crazy again, you just hit go. Let me switch this back to endless loop playback, and then we can talk about the next um, group of runtime parameters, and that's direction. Now direction is really cool because this has probably one of the biggest impacts on what your what your chaser looks and feels like. So the default is direction forward, which means that it's played back in the in the order that you programmed it. If we go backwards, obviously it's going to play it back in reverse step order. And you can see that here in the sequence sheet, it's just going from bottom to the top. Now the third option is really interesting, but also not too hard to guess. It's bounce and you can actually see that really nicely over here with the yellow um, playback marker. So it's just going forward until the last step and then backwards to the first step. And then, you know, the whole cycle from the beginning. And then lastly, one thing that I find really interesting, you can also set it to random. And obviously with a four step chaser, you won't really see that much of a difference. But just imagine you have a 10, 15, 20 step chaser. Um, in that case, the, the look and feel of your chaser will be dramatically different um, because, I mean, you obviously programmed it in a certain way with a certain direction and then all of a sudden you completely break that up. So with these two options, you can completely control how you play back your chaser. Um, and also what's really important, you can control the direction and sort of reuse that one chaser in many different ways. Now the last group of runtime parameters, which I absolutely love, are the fades. And you can see that up here in the encoders, but I also prepared a quick access macro for that. I'll show you that in a second. So let's just, yeah, let's just keep it at random and then increase the step fade to 50%. And now what will happen is that you can see the chaser is not jumping around um, but instead it's actually fading just a little bit. And you can see that it's fading in and it's fading out slightly. And the reason why I love this so much is because it can give your chaser, it, it can kind of take the edge off your chaser just a little bit and make it so much more softer. So depending on, for example, the mood of a track or I don't know, the mood of a player, whatever you do the lights for, you can actually use that one chaser and make it super, super soft and then when you need it back to be harsh and bam, in there, then you just turn the step fade off and then it's back to being really up in your face. Now, the cool thing is that you don't have to control step in and step out fade, um, you know, with one option, but you can also set them separately. So we can I don't know, set this to 100% and then you can see um, it's turning off really Partially. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with a with a red direction. So now it's fading in, sort of. <laughs> All right. Let me show you the macros, and then we we can actually play around with it a little more. So the macros that are prepared up here are just one-liners. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, you could also have the same effect by just going to the function and then. Switching, let's see, where do we have it? Step in fade, step out fade, and step fade. Those are the four options that we just saw in the encoders. But I thought I'd make it a little more quick access, especially for people like me uh, who don't have a console or a command wing. So now that we have a, an executor selected, we can just turn it to a fader. And now you can see I can perfectly control the look and feel of my chaser. Uh, with a fader. Whenever I need the, the master back, I just click on here and then can turn it in, fade it in and out. And also what's really nice, I can 
also set these separately. So what I actually really love doing is just setting the step out fader uh, because it makes your your chaser bleed a little bit. I love that look. All right, and I mean, same thing goes for other chasers. You just hit select, you let it run. Way too harsh. So let's switch this over to fader and make it a little softer, which you can't really see because the the step length is not very high. And 100% fade just means that it's going to fade 100% of the step length time. All right, but that's it. That's the two things I wanted to show you. One, how you can make sure that all of your chasers play back on a shared visual grid using a shared speed master and the speed multiplier options. And number two, the wealth of runtime parameters that you can use to completely change the look and feel of your chasers while you have them running. You don't have to switch into the programmer for this, um, but you can safely modify them on the fly. And that's something that I think makes chasers a really powerful and special tool. And I hope I could convince you a little bit of that. <laughs> All right, um, last reminder, last two reminders, again with any video that you see that has the yellow show file inside sticker on it, it means that you can completely um, download the show file for free in the video description. Same goes for this video. And number two, if you have any questions, um, requests for a video, whatever it may be, or better yet, um, a picture of how you're using any of my tutorials and your setups, then make sure to hit me up on Twitter at a guy named Jonas. Link is also in the description below. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I hope you have a really, really great week. Bye-bye.